And, and safe to say, uh, the folks in London um, terrorized to certain extremes from, from obviously terrorist activities, but, you know, 79 people dead in that fire. This is the worst stretch I think London has probably suffered since World War II. Uh, last night, we had a, a dramatic moment there. Worshippers at a mosque are leaving after uh, night worship services, and a 48-year-old man uh, drives his uh, truck up onto the sidewalk. One person dies, 10 injured in an attack. He is apprehended by the crowd, which he shouts, shouts uh, kill me, kill me, I'm going to kill all Muslims. I did my bit as he smiled and waved and blew kisses at the witnesses. And uh, restraint was shown. They held on to him until uh, police arrived. But Dr. Alex Del Carmen is here. He is from Tarleton State University in Texas, where he is a... Uh, uh, expert on uh, terrorism, mass shootings, and the like. And uh, Dr. Del Carmen, I- I'm surprised this is not happening more often, quite honestly, in a reaction to the Islamic terrorism that we see in similar fashion. You know, uh, good morning, and thanks for having me this morning. I-, I completely agree, and I think for some time we have been talking about the possibility of these types of attacks happening throughout the world. You know, we are a divided world, we are a divided nation, and it doesn't really surprise me that it happened in London last night. Yeah, and that's the thing, is that, that you see these retaliatory things happening now because so many terrorist attacks in the name of ISIS, and, and it just appeals to the fringe elements of society. I think that certainly radical Islam does that, as you have people who bastardize the Quran and, and, and you know wind up becoming radicalized, but now you have people who, I don't know his religious affiliation, presumably not Muslim, but reacting similarly, and these are these are individuals on the margins of society. We saw it um, in London. We keep seeing it in London. We saw it even with the, um, uh, you know, here in the United States, the divide between Republicans and Democrats. And look what happened in Alexandria, Virginia last week. Isn't it the same thing? Absolutely. And, you know, when we talk about radicalization, and we often refer to ISIS and we often refer to terrorists uh, being radicalized in a particular ideology in a particular country, This is exactly what's going on across the board, and we've seen it now not only in the U.S., but also in London as well. You know, there are people on the other side of the coin that are looking at this saying, we're going to seek revenge, we're going to make sure we we let them know, quote-unquote, what it feels like to be victims of terrorism. And, uh, and and I would not be surprised if these events happen more often now. Yeah, will we start seeing things like this in the United States is the big question. Absolutely, and I think we're going to start seeing that around the globe. I mean, America, as I've said before, uh, it, it's not going to be immunized from, from being the subject of radicalization on both ends of the spectrum. And the more polarized that we become, the more divided that we are, the more rhetoric that's going to take place on social media, the more it's going to inspire people, and some of which, frankly, are not mentally well, uh, that are going to, you know, race up and, and rise up and grab their arms and go out and, quote, unquote, seek revenge. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing about it is is we know that Muslims here gen- generally tend to be uh, well assimilated, um, unlike they are in the U.K. We've talked about the differences before, and that's our, our secret sauce here in America, if you will. But we're, we're now moving into the air instead of uh, the tension between uh, Muslims and uh, uh, Christians and agnostics, atheists, whomever. We're seeing that rift between Republicans and Democrats. It, uh, that's our version of what they're experiencing now over in Europe. Um, would you agree? Yeah, to some degree, but at the end of the day, even if we are Republicans or Democrats, I mean, most of us consider ourselves Americans first, and then perhaps part of a particular party second. So we're, you know, most of us don't process how we're going to damage and hurt our nation first, and then because of our political affiliation. But but I think London is and, and England individually is a very very different scenario in the sense that you've got folks that are coming in, some of which are recent arrivals from different parts of the world, most of which have not been vetted. Mm -hmm. Uh, The the London police have no idea who they have in their midst. And then in addition to that, you've got the element of individuals that absolutely refuse to be part of the U.K., Um, and so so it's very easy to see how this could happen. Boy, this really helps Donald Trump's cause, doesn't it? To some degree it does, because then you have have individuals that, that, you know, in in politics that basically turn around and point Mm -hmm. fingers and use one incident, one issue, and globalize it to the extent that then we begin, begin to install fear on people that somehow immigrants are the source of, of, of all evil, which obviously they're not. Right, but the idea here is to screen individuals to make sure those that come here are not going to do us harm internally. But those words are then twisted around. This is where we get back to the politics thing by by the opposition party that says, no, it's, it's uh, abject racism, you're not going to solve the problem, you're not going to do anything like that. Um, and we're back mired in a situation like which we saw last week. And that's my point about the, the divisiveness of politics right now. I, at the heart of it, they're using religion 
uh, in politics, I always have, too, to further divide people to get support for their parties. Absolutely. I mean, look what happened last week, you know, with the Republicans, you know, uh, practicing their 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 baseball game and and, uh, you know, a horrible act of terror. And then on the one side, you know, one one set of politicians argue that they should carry more guns. The other set of politicians said this is what happens when you give guns to people. So, I mean, clearly all of the incidents that have taken place in society and will continue to do so will somehow resonate in the political and religious world, particularly those that argue uh, after a certain ideology. Will uh, radical Islamists now respond to this attack in a mosque by further retail and say, okay, we're going to do this uh, in name of the attacks that happened yesterday in London? It's a, it just, it just continues? Yeah, that's a great point. You know, I, I tell you, they, they're going to have a lot of material now that they're going to be able to put in their social media and recruit people and basically tell them, look, this is, this is the reason why we have been attacking the Western world uh, so much, because they hate us. They hate Muslims. They hate Islam. They hate the religious, the, the religious uh, com- components and behaviors that we adhere to. They're racist. They're 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 homophobes. I mean, so so essentially, they're going to use this and spin it uh, in such a way that it's going to it's going to inspire other people to quote unquote join the crusade. Yeah, even though it's a false equivalent, because this guy snapped because of what he keeps seeing happening in his own country, and you know, it certainly is wrong. And, but I, I mean, I get the reaction because you're going after unstable people, and it motivated them much like unstable people are motivated to uh, die in the name of Allah. Right, and if you look at the profile of the people that are often recruited to these causes, I mean, they're individuals that, A, do not have the historical context of what they're doing, B, they're very immature, C, they're, C, they're, they're mentally unstable, and D, they're easily convinced. And so, so if you look at all of those people, you know, and that type of a profile, you will clearly find out then that this could be easily twisted uh, and penetrated in the minds of particularly young people. Dr. Alex Del Carmen from Charlatan State University in Texas this morning talking about the uh, terror attack last night in London and this one at the hands of a 40-year-old Caucasian man mowing down a group of late-night uh, um, uh, Muslims who are at uh, late night prayers, I think it's called uh, Tarawi, uh, celebrating Ramadan, and uh, he ran them over on the sidewalk saying, I'm going to kill all Muslims. I did my bit. He was smiling. He was waving. They beat the hell out of the guy. They didn't kill him and then turned him over to police, and, and, and rightly so. One of the things you hear about, too, and it's already started again this morning, is um, Muslim groups are, are outraged and they're issuing statements and saying this kind of uh, 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 these attacks can't be tolerated to which people who may support this individual or go, hey, wait a minute. Now, where were you when uh, when when the um, arena got bombed in Manchester? Where were you with the other London attacks? Where are these other groups? And I think that's a valid point. But just because the media doesn't pick up on the statement doesn't mean it didn't happen. Generally speaking, are most Muslim groups uh, speaking out against um, um, not only this terrorism, but also when it's at the hands of someone who does it allegedly in the name of their God? Yeah, I think in London it's been hit and miss. Uh, but I will tell you that, that in the United States, when we've had terrorist attacks, uh, particularly uh, performed by individuals that are radicalized and unfortunately follow the Muslim faith, uh, we have seen Muslim groups uh, come out uh, and, and, and be before national and international media condemning the attacks and, and reminding Americans that they're not the, you know, these individuals do not represent most Muslims. So I have seen it. I have heard it. I have read the comments by them. Obviously, they're not as forceful and perhaps, uh, you know, filled with emotion as they are today. But that is, you know, that stands to be reason in the sense that this is one, obviously, they've now suffered you know, uh, what the rest of us Christians have suffered now for some time at the hands of radicalized individuals. Yeah, and you're seeing that, too. And just because it's not widely reported doesn't mean it's not happening. I mean, they all have their own Twitter feeds and social media, and certainly a lot of these groups will speak out. And we just had recently a attack here in the United States where Muslims got together and raised uh, tens of thousands of dollars for some victims. So, you know, it, it does happen. But it's a much different, much different climate here in America with Muslims versus uh, over in Europe, and that's the key difference. That is exactly right, and I think, I think what we have, what we are seeing in London, and London did, does really worry me a great deal uh, because I think, sadly, we're going to see more acts like these, and the more they continue to, uh, to be divided, the more that we see radicalization take place, the worse that it's going to be uh, in months and years to come. I mean, it, it really is concerning that London has become now, as you said at the beginning of your show, you know, there's a trend now of violence 
that we can look back and say there are probably most cities in the Western world that have not suffered so many attacks uh, sequentially as London has experienced in the past few months. It is very, very concerning. Well, not only that, we had the fire that killed almost 70 people as well, and I said at the uh, open in the monologue, Doctor, uh, I, 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 I can have hardly think of any time in London's history where the people have been so up against it, um, probably since World War II, right, since the uh, Blitzkrieg. Yeah, that's exactly right, and I think that what we are seeing now, however, that's different, is that during World War II, we could point at the map and say, mm -hmm. you know, this particular country and this particular government hates us. But now, I mean, how can you really identify an enemy that hides inside the, uh, the you know, the boundaries of your country that takes the face of just anybody uh, and that basically change, they change their mechanism of hurt? I mean, think about the primitive, you know, behavior of sitting in a car, turning on your vehicle and using it as a weapon. I mean, weaponizing your vehicle mm -hmm. is as basic uh, as, as, as any other weapon that you could possibly use. It's almost like saying you can use a fork during dinner. I mean, anybody can do it. Right, right. And that's it. That now we're seeing that. And, you know, it's one thing flying buildings, uh, flying airplanes in the buildings, um, bombs, things like that. But weaponizing vehicles, um, it's impossible to stop. I get that. Dr. Alex Del Carmen, Tarleton State University in Texas. Thanks again for the time.